Hey everybody, Chad Wesley Smith here for Juggernaut Training Systems. Today we're going to continue our series on the scientific principles of strength training with the fourth principle, SRA, Stimulus Recovery Adaptation. So the principle of SRA is essentially just the training process. We're going to stress, we're going to repair, and then we're going to ready ourselves for the next training session. So the main issue that we're going to be dealing with with SRA is how frequently we're going to introduce overload hard training. So to better understand overload, make sure you refer to my previous video about it. Every different lift and different uh, physical system is going to have a different length SRA curve. And finding the optimal frequency of overload training is going to allow you to train as hard as possible, as frequently as possible, and with doing that, make gains as quickly as possible. So the three different power lifts, the squat, bench, and deadlift, all have different SRA lengths. The deadlift is the longest SRA curve it's the most stressful to the body from both a neural standpoint and a physical standpoint. So you're gonna need to train that the least frequently. The squat is gonna be the next most and the bench can probably be trained the most frequently. And there'll be some small considerations to be made for individual differences within that, such as if a sumo deadlifter is gonna be able to train more frequently than a conventional deadlifter. A high bar squat or a front squat can be trained more frequently than a low bar back squat close grip bench probably more frequently than a wide grip bench. And then people's unique leverages need to come into account as well. Short lifters are gonna be able to train more frequently than tall lifters. The bar is just not moving as far. It's technically, from a physics standpoint, not as much work. And then different physical qualities also have different SRA lengths. Technique, hypertrophy, force output, and tissue integrity all need to be considered separately when organizing your training frequency based on SRA curves. The technical abilities have the shortest SRA curve, meaning that you can train them the most frequently. And technique can be trained with relatively low intensity. This is where you would start to apply light sessions. To use a, a bit of an extreme example from another sport, if we were to think about a sport like golf. Golf is extremely technical, much more precise movement than powerlifting is. But obviously the intensity of what you're doing is so low because a golf club is so much lighter than uh, you know, squat, bench, or deadlift. And golfers could play 18 holes in the morning, 18 holes in the afternoon, repeat that day after day after day. Because the only thing that they're really dealing with is technical SRA. And it recovers very, very quickly, so they can and need to train it very frequently to maximize their abilities. From the strength sports world, we think about weightlifting. It's not uncommon for weightlifters to train six, nine, maybe even 12 sessions per week. And the weightlifting movements, the snatch and clean and jerk, are definitely more technical than the squat, bench, and deadlift. The weights also aren't as heavy, and there's no eccentric portion to the lifts, so they don't create as much muscular damage, so they can and need to train them more frequently to develop their technique to the necessary levels. Hypertrophy is going to be the second shortest SRA length of these different physical qualities. So muscle size is one of the most important underlying factors to strength. The bigger a muscle is, the better chance that athlete's going to have to be exceptionally strong. So because it's so important, we need to frequently train for hypertrophy. We need to frequently introduce that stimulus to the muscles. But different size muscles, different insertion angles are going to dictate how frequently we can train those muscles. So in short, small muscles can and should be trained more frequently than large muscles. So if you wanted to do things like training shoulders, uh, triceps, you know, much more frequently than say your lats or you know erectors, hamstrings, that's gonna be a good idea for you. Force production is also a paramount indicator of strength. The better the athlete can produce force, the better they can recruit muscle fibers and apply that into the barbell, the better our lifter they're gonna be. And it's been shown that advanced lifters are more capable of higher force production than or novice lifters, even with the same amount of muscle mass. So the more advanced the lifter becomes, the longer their force production SRA curve is gonna be, and the longer duration they're gonna need between high intensity training cycles, where they have to call on those abilities for high force production. And then finally, connective tissue integrity, so the health of your tendons and ligaments has to be considered as well. And those are gonna have the longest SRA curve of the four physical factors that we're discussing. So really heavy training, you know, peaking type of training is gonna be the most stressful to your joints and ligaments. 
So you're going to need the longest amount of time before that. So as we look at these different graphs, we can see the first point in the graph is where we introduce the stimulus. That's the training session. That's a hard and overload type of training session. And that's going to induce fatigue. That's as the performance drops down. That's the muscular damage, the stress to the nervous system, the stress to the tissue integrity, really focusing on tendon integrity and neural stress. So the more stimulus you create in that training session, the harder a training session is, and then the bigger, stronger, more fast twitch dominant the athlete is, the more stress they're gonna be able to induce. And then as the curve starts to come up, that's as the athlete starts to recover, and then as we exceed our previous abilities, that's the adaptation to training that we've undergone, and now we're ready to do more than we did before. So failure to allow for sufficient time between the introduction of the stimulus, so between the overload training sessions, is going to mean that maybe we don't get past our previous abilities as we recover. We don't adapt and prepare for harder and harder training. So that's the magic of SRA, is finding that exact best time of how many times should I squat, how many times a week should I bench, how many times a week should I deadlift. And it's going to be different for everyone. And we said the things to really consider about the different lengths is how big and strong the lifter is. The taller they are, the farther the bar has to move, the more work they're doing. The more muscle they have, the more muscular damage that they'll create, the longer it's going to take to recover from that. The more weight that's on the bar, the more neurally stressful it's going to be, the more stressful it's going to be to their connective tissue. So bigger, stronger, higher weight class, more advanced lifters cannot train as frequently as smaller weight class lifters, even who are very advanced, and particularly not as much as you know, shorter, smaller weight class lifters who are more at the beginner stages of their career in powerlifting. So properly applied SRA is gonna look like a well thought out arrangement of your training days. I could say squatting three times a week is good and benching twice a week and deadlifting once a week, but if my days are organized as squat, 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 bench, deadlift, bench, that's not gonna be a very good organization and it's gonna violate the principle of SRA. Of course, you guys are smart watching this, so I'm not too worried about you doing that, but make sure that you are spreading out those similar days, particularly squat and deadlift days probably not putting those back to back or at least if you are putting them back to back considering why you're doing that within the context of these principles finding that optimal frequency is going to be the most proper application finding the time that you can train hard and then be recovered enough to train hard again to be able to handle the overload training or maybe not waiting too long to maybe where your fitness has begun to decline so we've talked about the correct application of SRA ways that we tend to violate this principle be an under application, it's gonna to be too much frequency, training hard too often. And I see this happening, I think, more and more with the advent of more high volume, high frequency type of programs, and that's great, but too much frequency isn't gonna be a positive thing, so you gotta find that happy medium. Very high frequency training could be very good for beginner lifters because they're not able to induce very much stress or very much stimulus in each training session, and the longer they are away from the technique of the lift, the more likely it is for that technique to begin to decay. And as we mentioned, the technical SRA curve is the shortest. So even if it's a very light exposure to the lifts, maybe even on a daily basis, beginner lifters will benefit from very high frequency. But as you become more and more advanced, the frequency is probably gonna to need to, to go down a bit. Another under application of SRA would be the other side of the coin, too low of frequency. Very low frequency training like doing the lifts only once a week or maybe every other week could lead to diminishing fitness. Even though you're very, very well recovered, you don't have enough stimulus to keep the fitness high between training sessions. And of course, there are some very high level lifters who have been extremely successful with very low frequency training, maybe squatting every other week, deadlifting every 10 to 14 days. Make sure that you consider with that type of training that if an athlete is exceptionally strong and they're squatting 900, 950, 1,000 plus pounds in training, benching you know well into the fives or 600s and deadlifting in the mid to high 800s or the 900s, they're able to produce such significant stimulus per training session that it may be necessary for them to have what seems like an exceptionally long time between hard training sessions to be recovered enough to have the next training session. Also, it's important to consider that the use of Soviet sports supplements can help an athlete hold on to muscle mass 
even with very low frequency training. So make sure that you do consider that. Another under application of SRA, a training that's too clustered together. If you went squat, 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 bench, bench, deadlift, the frequency of that lifting is fine, but the organization of the frequency is not what you want as you're not gonna be properly recovered. But even having you know three hard training days in a row and then several days off, your schedule, your work schedule, your life schedule may dictate that you have to do that. But if it doesn't, that's gonna be something that you wanna avoid too. Because even though squat training doesn't directly affect the muscles of bench training, which you might do the next day, it's still not gonna be optimal because of the neural stress that the lifts create, and even some of the peripheral physical stress, like for the low bar squat, if your wrists and elbows are beat up, and that's gonna affect your bench training session the next day. So you wanna spread it out enough, but not spreading your training out so far that you're losing hypertrophic gains and your fitness is declining in between hard training sessions. An over-application of SRA is just the other side of things. It's waiting too long, waiting for complete healing of all systems considered. So a complete recovery of technical, uh, hypertrophic, force production, so neural qualities, and uh, connective tissue integrity. Waiting for all of those to be 100% healed is gonna actually cause some of them, the fitness of some of them to start to decline because of the varying lengths of SRA curves. So they need to be recovered enough to be able to handle the next train session, but you don't necessarily need all of them to be completely recovered. And that's just going to deal with the idea of fatigue management. I have a very in-depth video about that, so make sure you go and check that out. Another misapplication of SRA could be not taking advantage of the idea of functional overreaching with the different length SRA curves, allowing yourself to functionally overreach. So by exceeding your MRV, you'd be getting into a situation where maybe you wouldn't normally be able to recover in the time and the, and the regular length SRA curve couldn't be applied. But when you functionally overreach and do that by design, when you know that you have upcoming light sessions or deload weeks where you can still stay in touch with the shorter SRA curves like technique and hypertrophy, some low volume training, but allow for the other longer recovering systems like force production and tissue integrity to get completely recovered during that deload week. So in summary, you know, the main idea between SRA is to find the optimal organization of your training to squat, bench, and deadlift frequently enough and in the right order to maximize the amount of training that you can effectively recover from within the course of a training week or a training cycle. Different qualities are gonna have different length SRA curves. So when you're in a hypertrophy training cycle, you're gonna be able to train more frequently than you will be in a peaking training cycle because the qualities being addressed during hypertrophy are much faster recovering than those addressed in peaking where the neural stress in peaking is so high and the weights are so heavy that they're very stressful to your joint and tendon integrity, you're not gonna be able to have as frequent of overload training sessions. That's when you'll bring in light sessions to stay better in touch with your technical qualities. Deadlift is gonna be the most stressful, have the longest SRA curve, induce the most fatigue, and for most people will need to be trained hard the most infrequently. Squat will be in between and bench we probably train the most frequently. Obviously, if you're very, very strong, the weights are very heavy, the lengths are gonna to need to spread out. You could put light sessions in between that to help facilitate recovery and stay in touch with your technique, but you need to consider the athlete's size, strength, the fiber type, gender, supplement use, and the proximity to their career peak. So the smaller, lighter, less testosterone, less weight on the bar is gonna need and benefit from more frequent training because of the shorter SRA curves. And as they get bigger, stronger, heavier weights, they won't need as frequent of training because every training session, every stimulus that they introduce is gonna take them that much deeper down in the SRA curve and take a little bit longer to recover and adapt to be ready for the next training session. Beginners, train more frequently. You need constant exposure to the technique, the shortest SRA curve. As you get more and more advanced, begin to spread your training out a little bit, at least the very hard aspects of your training, the true overload sessions. Make sure you guys refer back to my earlier videos on specificity, overload, and fatigue management. You can go way more in depth on these topics in our book, Scientific Principles of Strength Training, by myself, Dr. Mike Isretel, and Dr. James Hoffman, as well as my newest book, A Thoughtful Pursuit of Strength, all of which you can get at jtsstrength.com. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel.